Want to learn how to make this really cute nautical themed centerpiece for your table for the summer? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. And as you saw, today's craft is a really cute, adorable, nautical theme centerpiece. It seems like nautical is all the rage, I guess, summertime. I mean, that kind of is a natural fit, right? Beach and sand and sun and woo. Anyway, okay, I come back to earth here. <laughs> anyway, I love this centerpiece. I had made it actually, I, don't, I think I'm going through puberty all of a sudden. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I love this centerpiece and I had made it for a crab feed that I had at my house and I thought that now since all of the nautical theme stuff is coming in, I would show you how to make it. It's a quick one, a simple one, and it looks adorbs, so you'll have to check it out. But first, hit that subscribe button down below and join the Glue Dot family. We have a lot of fun here and we'd love to have you be a part of it. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like my videos and leave me a comment down below because I love hearing from you all. I'd like to also thank my friends at Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. And if you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online community that has over 25,000, like thousand, okay, <laughs> videos and classes that you can take to learn about various topics, ranging from technology, business, cooking, craft stuff. I mean, it's awesome. And you can do it in the leisure of your own home in your pajamas instead of having to go take a class somewhere. So I want to share that with you and also let you know that the first 500 subscribers that go to the link down below get two months free trial, completely free, no obligation to join at all. So if you haven't done that yet, guys, what are you waiting for? It's completely free. If you're not one of the first 500, not to worry, a full membership with full access is only less than 10 bucks a month. So anyway, I think it's worth it. I think it's great and I think you should check it out. But right now, aside from that, before you check it out, I think we need to get to this project. So let's do it. So to get started, I'm gonna be painting my pie pan and I'm just gonna be using this apple barrel burnt umber paint. Um, on the picture that you saw of this project, I used a Lazy Susan that's actually wooden, but for this, I'm actually going to um, try and keep it more Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna be using this pizza pan from Dollar Tree so that you can all easily duplicate it. If you wanna use spray paint, you can do that as well. So it's not really critical to get this thing painted um, all over the surface because we're gonna be putting some sand in there to fill it in. So, and I also am kinda of doing a rough job on the painting just to give it a little bit of some texture and a little more um, rustic feel rather than perfectly painted. Okay, now that I've kind of got that aside, I'm gonna work on some of the little wood cutouts. Decide which ones you wanna use on this. I think I'm gonna use one of the, I don't know what they're called, the uh, steery wheely thingy mabobs, and also one of the anchors. So you'll also notice in my photograph of this project, I have a little bit of a different um, whatever this thing is called. It's escaping me right now. Um, and that one I made because I couldn't find this. So now that they have these, that made it a lot easier. The other one I ended up making out of kids bracelets and see the little wooden things and I glued it on there and it was a bit of drama, but I, I did get it done nonetheless and it turned out really cute, but this is so much easier way to go. So I'm just gonna paint mine white and then just use whatever little bit of brown paint is left from my, um, on my brush from painting the pizza pan and maybe just kind of give it a little bit of dry brushing and kind of make it look more rustic. It's up to you. Whatever style you want to do it, however you want it. If you want to keep it solid white, that works too. It would still look really cute. The other one I did, I just left it white. So kind of make it your own. I mean, the anchor, you may want to make it kind of gray. But I might add a little black into my paint and do that. 
I find like sometimes on these things, you just want to not think too hard or try too hard. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry. And while those are drying, I'm going to work on my first log. But first, I got to clean all this mess up. Be right back. Okay, so to start out to make this, what I did is took this sticker off of my glass, and I always like to use alcohol to clean my glass off with because we're gonna be using the hot glue on there, and I wanna make sure that it, it sticks as well as possible. And it's so funny, as I was doing this with the alcohol and the towel in my hand inside, I totally had flashbacks of my grandmother doing cupping on us as a kid. Um, some of you may know what that is, others of you may not, but it's where they put the heat the cup up and put it onto your skin and it's the suction, suctions your skin in there. So I know it sounds kind of barbaric, but ah, you know, that's an old Greek grandmother for you. So we're gonna take our top vinyl liner, as it's called, and we're going to be using it to cover our glass to make our first log. Um, kind of take a look, one roll should be enough to do all three of your glass, the tall glass cylinder, the shorter glass cylinder, and then one glass. So I picked this glass because it's straight up and down and it doesn't have any curves to it and I thought it would look the most like a log. So when you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to measure this out in this direction because you want the wood grain to be going up and down like it would be if you were actually having a piece of log. So we're gonna go ahead and measure out and cut approximately, I'm just gonna trim it afterwards, but this has some little lines on it. You can use those lines as a reference. I think they're pretty straight. Um, I'm hoping they are anyway. <laughs> Sure, like I like to have the knot in on mine, so I wanna make sure that I have that showing so that I don't cut that portion of it off. This closed side is gonna be the top side of your log. You do wanna cut this a tad longer because what we're gonna be doing is attaching it, gluing it inside so that we don't have just a, a raw edge showing. So we're gonna go ahead, get this lined up to make sure that your edge is straight so when you're rolling it around, you're not gonna run out of material. Okay, and then once you know that you have it straight, you're just gonna put your hot glue, I'd like to put it directly onto this vinyl or whatever you wanna call this, the drawer liner, and then place it down. Now if you want to make sure this is a little more permanent, you could put more glue. I don't, I, it holds up beautifully without putting a bunch of extra glue, hot glue around. So you don't really need to, except for at the beginning and the end point. So I've got that all the way around. Now we have this little edge here. What we're gonna be doing is making some little cuts in that the way around so that we can go ahead and hot glue that and tuck it down inside. This is a pretty easy project and it looks super, super cute. So I had done this, I had a crab feed at my house and we had friends over so literally the night before I decided to throw this together. But anyway, they were so impressed and they just thought it was just such a big deal and kind of amusing to me because you guys see how quickly we're putting this together. Pretty simple. Okay, so that side's all done and tucked in. And the last thing we're gonna do to make our log is to cut a piece I have um, a scrap piece from my previous project, but you can still use your, your whole roll here and just make sure that you stay close to the edge because you do wanna make sure you have enough of this roll left to cover everything. And the way we're gonna do this is just go on the back side here, place this and just trace it out. And then you're gonna be cutting out your circle now. I made a bit of a mess on my glass because I was in a hurry and I should have actually measured it out before I put the vinyl on here is a good idea to measure this out, but not to worry because I have my handy dandy alcohol. And in case you did not know, alcohol removes Sharpie, which is so cool. So there you have it. It's just coming right off, no big deal. But if you want to avoid having to do that, just measure out before you put the vinyl on here. Okay, so now we have this piece, just cut it out because the Sharpie's pretty thick. I'm gonna go a little bit on the inside edge of my line and then we're just gonna measure out here, make sure it looks pretty good, fits great. Throw some hot glue 
and then attach your circle. So there we have our first log. We're gonna go through and do that on the other two. Um, this is gonna be our tallest log, and then we have the other uh, we have the other vase that's like this, which is a little bit shorter, and then this is our glass, which is gonna be the smallest one. So get the three of those done, and then we'll be moving on. So once you get your three logs made, you're gonna be taking your nautical rope, give it a start somewhere, and you can glue it down if you'd like to. I didn't glue mine down because I've made this to take it apart, um, but I started by gluing it together there and then just wrapping around. I'm going around four times. Make it a bit snug-ish so that your logs don't uh, come apart. And the last thing you're gonna do is just glue that down. Now, if you want to glue it to this, you can. If not, you can just glue it directly to the rope so that you can remove it again. I'm just gonna glue it directly to my rope because as I said, this probably will get taken apart again so I can reuse these items. So this is what we've got so far, starting to come together. What would be really cute on this, but I haven't seen any at Dollar Tree especially, but if you may have, is one of those seagulls standing on top of here. That would be so cute. Anyway. So the next step we're gonna do is basically start putting this together. So we're gonna take our pizza pan that we had painted ahead of time and place your logs and I'm making sure that everything is facing the way I want it to. And then we're gonna start pouring in our sand. So I've got my shells here, I've got my sand. I was only able to find the white sand at Dollar Tree the last couple times I went. But if, you know, you can find sand pretty much in a lot of places, I think. It's up to you however you want your project to look. We can pretend that we're at a white sand beach somewhere. That works for me. It will definitely take the two bags of sand. Then we're just simply gonna start placing our little pieces. So kind of place your shells wherever you want. And what I like is having my, somebody tell me what this is called. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> um, I like to place that over here on the shorter side and have it sort of tilting, leaning up against that. And then I'll probably put my anchor on the other side because if this is a centerpiece, it's kind of nice to have people having a, a nice view on all sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these shells placed on. And the very last thing we're gonna do, which is optional, um, but putting some little candles up here on the tops. Unless, like I said, you maybe have a seagull or something else that you think would look good on top of there. You could always put some type of little plants or something like that. Be creative and we'll go from there. All right. By the way, if you're enjoying my videos, please give me a thumbs up and hit that like button and subscribe. We'd love to have you join the glue dot family. We of course have great time over here all the time. Hang on. I'll show you this all done. Mm -hmm. 